I posted an article on my Tumblr last week from CNN Tech about how YouTube may be facing the adpocalypse part two, three? 11 t Because it's still running ads against extremist videos. Ads from over 300 companies and organizations, including tech giants, major retailers, newspapers, and government agencies, ran on YouTube channels promoting white nationalists, Nazis, pedophilia, conspiracy theories, and North Korean propaganda. So how did this happen? Again. And why can't YouTube stop it? Well, let's look at some of the things they've done since last time. One of YouTube's previous responses to the whole adpocalypse mess was to restrict channels with fewer than 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time from being able to monetize, and also requiring that you keep your watch time above a certain level to stay monetized. To say that this was not a popular move among small creators would be something of an understatement. But it does at least partially solve the problem of people starting up YouTube channels, immediately monetizing them, and then proceeding to post videos about how Hitler is a really nice person who likes dogs, or how Daesh is awesome. One of the other methods that YouTube has brought in to make sure that all of the videos it runs ads against are brand safe is its demonetization algorithm. The algorithm scans videos as they're uploaded to the site for potentially inappropriate content and may demonetize them on that basis. And YouTube brought this feature in without really announcing or explaining it, but YouTube's failures of communication are not the topic of this video. Now, it's true that if your video is demonetized by this algorithm, you can appeal it but it may or may not work. The odds that you'll actually get your video seen by a human are relatively low unless you're already a large channel, and if your video is demonetized, it's almost certainly going to be during the first day or two, which is when you'd expect the highest number of views and thus the highest ad revenue because all of your subscribers are coming to check it out. So for creators, not helpful. However, the advantage of the algorithm is that it learns, so the more we submit appeals, the more it can learn whether or not that's actually unsafe content or inappropriate content, or whether it's actually okay. And hopefully that means there will be fewer false positives in future. Which may not be good news for you if everything you do is deemed brand unsafe by YouTube, but does at least mean that the more obvious bad actors are probably gonna get caught. So there is some utility to it. But why do you need an algorithm at all? Is it just that YouTube are unwilling to put in the money to hand check every dodgy video? Well, I don't know if they're unwilling to spend money, but given the demands of the platform, they would be physically unable to keep up with all of the videos on here, because so much content is uploaded to YouTube every day. I looked up some estimates which ran from 300 to 500 hours of content being uploaded to YouTube every minute. Even if only a fraction of a fraction of those videos were going to cause problems, that is a higher workload than any human moderation team can handle, so you need the algorithm. But by the same token, you can't rely solely on the algorithm. Humanity is a creative species. If we perceive an obstacle, we are ingenious at figuring out ways around it. And people are willing to put in a whole lot of work to do so. I mean, those Nigerian prince scams don't write themselves, now do they? So say you want to start a channel which you know that YouTube would immediately want to crack down on. You know, neo-Nazis. Daesh, pedophilia, North Korean propaganda. I mean, you could just put up your videos, which are obviously about neo-Nazis or Daesh or whatever, and you could tag them with neo-Nazi or Daesh or whatever, but YouTube reads your title and your description and your tags. It looks at your thumbnail for inappropriate content like gore or weapons. And it listens to your audio so it can generate automatic captions. What I'm saying is, if your video is obviously about a topic that YouTube has deemed unsafe or inappropriate, it's not gonna happen. They might not ban you and delete your account, but they won't monetize you. But if you had time and you were willing to play the long game, and as we have seen from the Russian Tumblr bot thing, governments are, then you can make a lot of videos, most of which are fairly innocuous, and then when you want to sneak your not so innocuous videos past YouTube, you have this whole backlog of appropriate content. Plus, you can scrupulously avoid using any of the words which might ping the algorithm in the video itself. There was a good example of this from Facebook, actually. There was a group on Facebook called Britain First, which got banned after coming to global attention, having been shared by Donald Trump. The reason that Facebook banned them is for inciting hatred by posting videos like Muslim migrant, who wasn't actually a Muslim migrant at all, beats up Dutch boy on crutches. At the time that they were banned though, Britain First had more than two million likes on Facebook. How does a page which posts videos comparing Muslims to animals get more than two million likes? Well, because Facebook doesn't show you everything a page does. 
right? And while Britain First posted the occasional video which should have gotten them an Insta ban, mostly they posted really innocuous stuff. We love this British sports star. Like if you do too. Share if you love your military family. Give this post a thumbs up if you're proud of our veterans. Look at this cute picture of a dog. Okay, I'm not sure about that last one, but. And then every so often they'd put up something like Muslim migrant who isn't actually a Muslim migrant beats up Dutch boy on crutches. But Facebook being Facebook only shows a fraction of the people who follow a page each post that the page puts up. It'd be entirely possible to be a follower of Britain First for years, particularly if you don't use Facebook all that often, and to have seen nothing from them but cute pictures of dogs and poppy wreaths. Facebook knows what you like, remember? So to bring this back to YouTube, they can crack down, but it's really hard. When something comes to mass media attention, obviously they'll remove it, but there are thousands and thousands of channels which are basically akin to the Britain First Facebook page and they're not being taken down because they're just not getting flagged that often. Keeping bad actors off your platform when you're the size of YouTube is not hard, it's pretty much impossible. But you can cut down on the numbers of bad actors. And so you have the algorithms, because you can't possibly manage the quantity of content on YouTube without them. And on top of that you have your moderation team, because people are smart and will figure out ways around your algorithms. But the moderation team needs someone to tell them about the bad actors. They need people to report the animal abuse and the pornography and the beheadings. Unfortunately that's a difficult thing to incentivize well, because what you actually want is for good people with good intentions to flag videos which are actually inappropriate while discouraging bad people with bad intentions from flagging things because they don't like it. YouTube Heroes, which you might remember as one of YouTube's 2016 controversies, was supposed to be YouTube's way of getting the people who use the site to provide them with free labour, i.e. we will gamify the system by giving you points for doing this grunt work, and as you get higher up the ranks we will give you things like a small amount of power over others, <laughs> Which was possibly not the best idea in the world given that it actively incentivized flagging videos. I mean if YouTube agrees with your flag and takes the video down you get a point, but if YouTube disagrees then nothing happens so why not try it? So this is the problem. Why can't YouTube just find all of the bad actor channels and delete them? Because people are smart. Even bad people and so it's basically an arms race. But what do you think? How do you reckon that YouTube should solve its problems? The ad problem, or the terrorist content problem, or any of its many other problems? Leave a comment, let me know, and I'll see you next time.